Hello children of primary three. How are you? I hope you are fine and hoping your parents will work. If you're doing so, that is very good. If you have not been doing it, please do the needy fool. So today we are here for our lesson. Our first lesson that is in English so we are having a lesson one in English and I expect you to be very attentive so today we are going to look at culture and gender in a town council culture and gender in a town council and under culture and gender we are going to look at customs in a town council. We are going to look at customs in a town council. But before we start, let's first get to know what culture is, what gender is, and what customs are. Are we ready? Okay, culture is the way people live and behave in a given society. Culture is the way people live and behave in a given society. That is culture. Then gender is the state of being male or female. Gender is the state of being male or female. Then we have customs. Customs are acceptable ways of behaving in a given society. Customs are acceptable ways of behaving in a given society. So we have seen culture, we have seen gender, and we have seen customs. But before we start, or before we look at the vocabulary, let's first take the spelling activity. Are we ready? So I hope you're there with your pen and the small book where you are going to write. So if at all you are ready, let's take number one. Number one is great. Great. Number two, nil. Nil. Then number three is pain. Number three is pain. So number one is great. Number two is nil. And number three is pain. Are we there? Okay, if I tell you are done, then we are going to see whether the words that we have written are correct or wrong. So we are going to start with number one. And number one is great. Great is gay. R E E T. Gay. R E E T. That is great. So if you've got it correct, that is very good. If you've got it wrong, you make the correction. Then we move to number two. Number two that we have is nil. A nil is K N E E L. K N E E L. That is nil. Then the last one that we have is pain. Are we there? And pain is P A I N. P A I N. That is pain. So we have said that we are going to look at culture and gender in a town council. And under culture and gender, we are going to see customs. So we have the vocabulary for today. And we are going to see. So we have the vocabulary. Let's read it together. The first one that we have is sing. We have where. Da. Sorry. We have sing. Where, great, food, cry, pray, kneel, dance, happy, 
sad, pain, sick, regular, irregular, sung, wall, cried, knelt, and then danced. Are we there? Let's have them again. So the first one that we have is sing, we have where, we have great, we have ford, we have cry, we have pray, we have kneel, we have dance, we have happy, sad, pain, sick, regular, irregular, sung, war, cried, knelt and then danced so those are the words that we are going to have today under customs but before we continue let's first have some activity that is to enhance our spelling are we there so we have the first one which says rearrange the letters to make correct words that is the first activity that we have so we have a and on a we have letters s g n i so when you look at those letters very well you can see that they form a word and which word do you think they do form okay thank you those letters form the word sing can we spell the word sing Okay, thank you. So sing is S-I-N-G. That is sing. Then the next one that we have on B, we have E, A, W, E, and R. Still, when you look at those letters, they can give us a word. So when you rearrange them, you can get a correct word from those letters. So we should what did you think they from okay thank you that word is where can we spell the word where okay that is good it is w e a r that is very good so we have c and we have those letters we have n e l k and e so you look at those letters very well and read for me the word that they form then the next one that we have is A N D C E. So still you look at those letters very well and form a correct word. Then on E we have O O F D. Still you rearrange those letters and form a correct word. Then the next one that we have is A H. P P Y. Still, you look at those letters very well and form the correct word from them. Then, still, we are still continuing with the spelling practice, and we have activity two. And for activity two, they are telling us fill in the missing letters to make correct words. Fill in the missing letters to make correct words. So we have A, and on A we have H, there is a space or there is a missing letter, PP, and then Y. So which letter do you think is missing? Okay, that is right, it is missing A, and which word is that? Okay, that is happy. So on A, we have happy, and the letter which is missing is A. So you'll continue to B. So on B, we have R, E, G, then we have a dash, L, A, R. So you look at those letters and get to know which letter is missing and form which word. Then on C, we have K, N, dash, L, and T. So still you look at those letters very well and get to know which one they are forming and which letter is missing. Then on D we have S dash D. Still you fill in the missing letter to make a correct word. Then on E we have P. We have a dash 
a dash and n so which means for that one there are two letters that are missing so you fill in those missing letters in form a correct word then on f we have cr dash e and d and we have a letter which is missing so you look for that letter which is missing you put it there and make sure the word you have formed is a correct word okay so now we move to activity three are we ready for activity three and on activity three we are looking at adjectives in our vocabulary so in our vocabulary we have those words that are adjectives and among them we have sad we have happy and we have regular so as we are looking at those three we shall look at their different forms so we have those adjectives remember adjectives are describing words so we are having sad we are having happy and then we have regular so as we are looking at those adjectives we shall see the different forms of each and then we shall also see the areas where we use them for example when we look at the word sad it has the positive form it has the cooperative form and it has the sporative form so the positive form of sad is sad then the cooperative is sadder and the sporative is saddest then we have happy the positive form of happy is happy then we have the cooperative which is happier then we have the sparative, which is happiest. Then as we look at regular, we have the positive, which is still regular. We have the cooperative, which is more regular. And then we have the sparative, which is mostly regular. But we looked at sad, sadder, and then saddest. Then happy, happier, and then happiest. But as we are writing the sadder and saddest, the d doubles in the cooperative and we add er then in the sparative the d still doubles and we add es t then for happy in the cooperative the y changes to i and we add er that is for the cooperative form and we form happier then for the sparative the y still changes to i and we add es T, and that is happiest are we there so still as we are looking at those adjectives we have the positive form we have the cooperative form and we have the sparative form so when do we use the positive form when do we use the cooperative form and when do we use the sparative form we use the positive form when we are looking at one object we look at or we use the positive form when we are looking at one object then we use the cooperative form when we are comparing two objects for example if you have Sarah and Peter and the word that you have is happy then since they are two we say happier so if you're saying Peter then you say Peter is happier than Sarah and in the cooperative form, we normally use the word than how it's together. Then for the sparative form, we look at objects that are more than two. So we start from three onwards. So in order for you to use the sparative form, you must be having three and more objects so you can have three you can have four you can have a thousand you can have a million and you can have as many as possible so long as it is not one or two that is for the sparative so under adjectives we have that activity which says complete the table below so we have the adjectives in the positive form we have the ones in the cooperative form then we have the ones in the sparative form so 
when you look at the first one, we are having sad in the positive, then we are having a dash in the cooperative, then in the superlative we have saddest. So you're going to fill for me the cooperative form of sad in that table. Then the next one is happy, that is in the positive. We have happier in the cooperative. Then you're going to fill the superlative form of happy. Then we move to regular. You're going to fill the cooperative form. Then the superlative is most regular. Then we have activity four. And activity four says use the correct form of the words in the brackets. So we have seen the areas where we can use those different forms. So we look at the first one. The first one says Sam is dash than Tom. So you're going to look for which form you're going to use such that you make that sentence a correct sentence. Then we have the next one which says Joan is the dash girl in primary three. Then in brackets we have happy. So still, you'll have to change the happy to its most correct form such that it fits in that uh, space and gives a correct uh, sentence. Then the next one that we have is mommy is dash today. Then in brackets we have sad. So you'll have to use the correct uh, form. Okay. So still, we are still dealing with our vocabulary. And here we move to the next activity, that is activity five. And we are going to form adverbs from the given adjectives, all from the adjectives that we have. And the adjectives that we have there are all happy, regular, and then sad. So from those adjectives, we can form adverbs. Adverbs tell us the way things are done, or they tell us they tell us how something is done. For example, from happy, we can get that adjective happily. And if you're writing the word happily, you change the Y to I, and then you add L, Y. So you can say, Sam happily welcomed his teacher. So... That happily is telling us the way Sam was when he was welcoming his teacher. Then we have regular. And from regular, we can get regularly. Or we can form regularly. And from regular, we add L-Y to get regularly. So as we are writing the word regularly, it is R-E-G-U-L-A-R-R. -E L Y that is regularly. Then we move to the next one, which is sad. From sad, we can use or we can change it to sadly. And how do we change to sadly? We add L Y on that adjective sad. So the adverbs that we are going to form there. From happy, we are going to form happily, then regular, regularly, then sad, we are going to form sadly. So you have that activity there, whereby you're going to form adverbs from those adjectives. Okay. Yes, so the next activity tells us to use the correct form of the words in the brackets. And the first one that we have says, Jane dash welcomed the visitors. And in brackets we have happy. Jane dash welcomed the visitors. In brackets we have happy. So you're going to use the correct form of the word happy to form a correct sentence. So the next one says, David dash talked to his friend. David dash talked to his friend. Then in the brackets we have sad. So still you use the correct form of the word sad to make that sentence a correct sentence. Are we there? Then we now move to activity six. 
And on activity six, we are going to form nouns from those adjectives and verbs. Are we there? So those verbs or adjectives from where we are going to form the nouns are pray, sing, dance, pain, sick, happy, and sad. So we are going to see which nouns we form from which verb or adjective. And the first one that we are going to start with is pray. Sorry, we are going to start with, yes, we are going to start with the pray. And which noun did we get from pray? We get prayer. And how do we write the word prayer? It is P-R-A-Y-E-R. So we can get prayer from pray. All together. So the next one that we have is sing. And from sing, we can get singer. From sing, we can get singer. And singer is S-I-N-G-E-R. Then the next one that we have is dance. And from dance, we get dancer. And try the word dancer. You get the word dance and add letter R. So dancer is the A. N C E R that is dancer. Then we have pain. From pain we can get painful. From pain we can get painful. And we can also get painless. How it together? So the word painful is P A I N F U L. P-A-I-N-F-U-L. The word is painful. Then for painless, it is P-A-I-N-L-E-S-S. That is painless. Then we have sick. And from sick, we can get sickly. From sick, we can get sickly. And sickly is S-I-C-K-L-Y. And someone who is sickly is that someone who is often sick and weak. That is someone who is sickly. Then the next one that we have is happy. How are we together? We have happy. We have already looked at the word happy and we have looked at it under adjectives whereby we have happier and happiest. We have seen it under formation of adverbs and we have seen it as happily. So now we can also get happiness. We can also get happiness and as we are writing the word happiness still the y changes to i and then we add n e s s so happiness is h a p p i n e s s that is happiness and then from sad we can form sadness how it together so sadness is s a D N E S S S A D N E S S that is sadness. So still we have an activity there. You're going to form for me nouns from those verbs and adjectives. So you're going to write for me the noun that you can get from sing. You write the one that you can get from dance, from pain, from sick from happy, from sad, and then from pray. Okay, we now move to activity seven. And under activity seven, we are looking at opposites. Don't forget, we are still looking at our vocabulary, so we are getting those different forms. So our activity seven is opposites. And as we are looking at opposites, we are going to see the opposite of sad, regular, cry, and then painful. So we start with the first one, which is sad. 
Yes, someone who can give me the opposite of sad. That is very good. The opposite of sad is happy together. And I know you have seen the word happy and you can write it very correctly. Okay, we move to regular. Are we there? Something which is regular is something that is commonly done or something that we usually do. That is something which is regular. So the opposite of regular is irregular. The opposite of regular is irregular. And as we are writing the word irregular, we start with I, R, R, E, G, U, L, A, R. And the word is irregular. I repeat. I, R, R, E, G, U, L, A, R. Please have those spellings carefully because you're going to write those opposites. So we have the next one, which is cry. We looked at the vocabulary cry. So we are looking at cry and the opposite of cry is laugh. The opposite of cry is laugh. And laugh is L-A-U-G-H. L-A-U-G-H. And the word is laugh. So the opposite of cry is laugh. Then the one that we have last is painful. And the opposite of painful is painless. The opposite of painful is painless. So painless is P-A-I-N-L-E-S-S. Are we together? So, we have that activity there about opposites, and it says, give the opposite of, so you're going to write for me the opposite of these ones. The first one that we have is sad, we have regular, we have cry, and we have painful. So, we have seen the opposites of those words, so you're going to write them very neatly. So we now move to the next one and the next form that we are going to look at is verbs. Still as we are looking at the vocabulary or today's vocabulary, we have verbs among them. And the first verb that we have is sing, we have where, have great, cry, pray, kneel and dance. And we are going to see the way they appear in the different tenses. We start with the first one, which is sing. So we have sing whereby we shall see it in the present simple tense, the present continuous tense, the past tense, and then the past participle tense. So we have the sing which will appear as sing in the present simple tense. That is, if it is working with the plural subjects, we shall have sings. That is, if it is working with the singular subjects in the present simple tense, we shall have it as singing in the present continuous tense. We shall have it as sung in the past tense, then still sung in the past participle tense but the song in past tense is s a and g and then the song in the past participle tense is s u and g all right together so we now move to the next one which we have and the next one that we have is where okay we have where and it will appear as where in the present simple tense with the plural subjects we shall have it as whereas in the present simple tense with the singular subjects. Then wearing in the present continuous tense. We shall have it as wall in the past tense. And the word wall is W-O-R-E. Then we shall have it as one in the past participle tense. And one is W-O-R-E. 
n. Then we move to the next one, which is great. So we shall have it as great in the present simple tense with the plural subjects, great in the present simple tense with the singular subjects. Then we shall have it as grating in the present continuous tense, grated in the past tense, and still grated in the past participle tense. We now move to cry. So we shall have it as cry in the present simple tense with the plural subjects, cries in the present simple tense with the singular subjects, and the word cries is C R I E S. So as we are writing the word cries, from the word cry, we remove Y and replace it with I, and then we add E S. Then the present continuous tense is crying. Then we have it as cried in the past tense and cried in the past participle tense. And as we are writing the word cried, still the Y changes to I and we add E, D. So the cried is C-R-I-E-D. So we move to the next one, which is nil. And nil will, is used in the present simple tense with the plural subjects. The nils still in the present simple tense, but with singular subjects. We shall have it as kneeling in the present continuous tense. We shall have it as knelt in the past tense. Then still knelt in the past participle tense. Then the last verb that we have is dance. And for dance, we shall have it as dance in the present simple tense with the plural subjects. Then dances in the present simple tense with the singular subjects. We shall have it as dancing in the present continuous tense. And dancing is D-A-N-C-I-N-G. So if we are forming the present continuous tense and we get that verb that ends with E, then... We omit the E and then we add ING. Then the past tense of dance is danced. Then the past participle is also danced. So we have seen those different forms of those verbs. So the next activity or the activity that we have there is complete the table. Complete the table. So we have the table of tenses and we have those verbs. And then you are going to fill in those missing ones. Like the sing is missing the present continuous tense. So you'll have to write it there. The where is missing the past tense, so you'll have to fill the past tense of where, that is, as you look at where. Then we have great, and under great, the um, present simple form that works with the singular subjects is missing, so you're going to fill it there. We have the grit, and for the grit, the past participle is missing, so you'll have to fill it. When we move to nil, the nil is missing the present continuous tense in the past participle tense. Then dance is missing the present continuous tense and the past tense. So that is what we have had for today. Thank you for listening. Let me hope you are going to write very neatly. And I hope you have not forgotten the correct letter shapes. Please don't forget as you are writing, don't forget to punctuate your work. Don't forget to punctuate your work. So you write, write your work very well. Write it neatly and punctuate it. Okay? Thank you so much. Let's meet in the next lesson.